of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. of the highway patrol is the safeguarding of the billions of dollars worth of goods which are transported on the public highways. On March 29th, a crime was committed involving a vehicle which did not seem to be valuable, an ordinary unmarked panel truck. That's our baby. Where's the flag? What's this, a hijacking? No, it's a Cub Scout meeting. I said out. All right, let's get him around the other side of the truck so he won't be seen from the road. Get the keys. Got the list? Yeah, right here. Okay. Read off the crate numbers that are checked. We don't want to take any excess baggage with us. Right. First one. Yeah. 224B. 224B. You got it? Yeah. 247C. 249C and 252J. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not a machine. I'm here. Give me a hand with this. What was that again? 249C and 252J. Come on, hurry it up, will you? Any more? Yeah, there's one more. 277A. Oh, here we are. This is the one we leave here. Oh. Get the tire iron. And keep your eye on the driver. Don't worry about the driver. He's out cold. This is odd. That's worth 70,000 bucks. 70,000 bucks? That it is odd. Don't shoot, you haven't got a chance. You must have hit him like you were cracking eggs. What'd you expect me to do, kill him? Come on, we'll, we'll take his panel truck. Now, as soon as he hits a phone, this truck is going to be hot and so are we. Well, in that case, why don't we just leave the pictures and get out of here, huh? We blew this job, we wouldn't get paid by Mills. Yeah, that Mills, he's safe and sound counting his dough and we're sticking our necks out a mile. Wait a minute. I'll get the flag. Out. I'll stand up against that hay and act nice and natural. Tony, take care of that picture. Those things in the back of the truck and get out of here. Now, stick your hands on. Did you put the letter with the hole? Yeah, everything's taken care of. All secure. What about him? He goes with us? I guess he'll have to. You keep him covered and I'll drive. Come on, happy boy, move. Come on, move.
operator. Get me the highway patrol. And hurry up. A hijacking incident could mean an attempted revival of what had been a highly organized racket. Or it could mean a one-shot try for a specific cargo. The patrol moved fast. Within minutes, an officer was dispatched to the scene. A few miles from the area, the head of the highway patrol was on his way to headquarters when the call came through. The nature of the crime warranted a rendezvous with the investigating unit. The driver of this panel truck made the call. He got away in the hijacker station wagon. How many guys involved in the job? Two. Can you describe him? He already has. It's in the mill. Oh, fine. Is that him? Have DMV run a make of that station wagon. Might belong to one of the guys we're looking for. Yes. I'm Matthews. Thanks very much for your fast call. Would you mind going over the whole thing again for me, please? Oh, well, like, like I told your man, I was coming up the road when this guy... He, he, he looked like a road worker, you know. Well, this guy flags me down, I stop, and... He pulls a gun, and next thing I know, I'm hit over the head. They tell me you got a good look at him. I can describe one of them for sure. The other, maybe. A couple of real wise guys. Ma uh, making cracks about uh, Cub Scout meetings and all. Hey, take a look at this knot. They don't teach you to make those kind of knots in the Cub Scouts. How'd you get away? Well, they're unloading the paintings from the truck. I dash for the station wagon, and <laughs> here I am. All right, thanks. Come on over here with me, will you? Looks like our boys need a course in art appreciation, doesn't it? The driver of the truck said they only took about four or five paintings and left all the others. Is that all? Well, all the crates are numbered. They must have known what they wanted. Giles. Does this name mean anything to you? No, sir. How's it feel, fella? Bumps on your head change your personality sometimes. Maybe I'm due for an improvement. This name ring a bell with you? Sure, Carter Giles. That's where he's taking this load, to his house. Who is he? One of those big art collectors. Supposed to be worth a fortune. From where I hear, he spent over a million bucks on paintings. And that ain't exactly... Hey. Get out an APB on all hay trucks in the Central Turnpike area. Maybe our boy switched from a station wagon to a hay wagon. Yes, sir. Look, Mr. Mills, this is no time to go through the rule books. We're in trouble. This whole thing is going up for grabs. Yeah, we got the paintings and left a note for Mr. Giles, but the truck driver got away. All right, listen to me. The best thing you can do is to separate yourself from that hay truck, that driver, and those paintings. Yes, those paintings. I don't want any part of them. Not now. What about us? That station wagon will lead the cops right to our door. If you think we're going to take the fall for you, you're crazy. You have to get us out of this and fast. I intend to get you out of this. Where are you? The gas station at the top of the hill, at the end of Route 9. All right. I'll pick you up outside that gas station in about an hour. I've got to get you out of that area. Now, as to the paintings and that truck driver, there's only one thing you can do, and it must be done quickly and efficiently. Do you hear that, Eddie? Efficiently. You understand? If that's the only way to do it, I, I guess that's the only way. Mr. Matthews? What? Oh, fine. Let me have the name. Edward R. Wells. What's the address? 272 Vernon Avenue. All right, thanks a lot. Dorsey. Yes, sir. DMV reporting that station wagon. Edward R. Wells, 272 Vernon Avenue. Have you got it? Right. All right, check criminal records. One shot. See what you can turn up on this guy. Send a man out to the house. Check it out. Yes, sir. Get that, will you? reports a hay truck cracked up just off the turnpike. Four paintings still in their crates found in truck. Hay truck? And one dead man. 
Well, come on, let's go. Stolen paintings are here, that helps. Looks like murder. It's gonna look the same way to the coroner. The man found dead in the hay truck had not died of injuries caused by the accident. According to the coroner's report, he had been murdered. The key witness to the art robbery could identify the paintings, but not the murder victim. However, two hours later, the first lead on the two crimes was uncovered. The driver of the hijacked truck recognized the mugshot of one of the hijackers. You sure this is the man? He seems to be. Recognized him right away. Says this is the one that held the gun on him while the other one slugged him. Edward R. Wells, age 32, convicted armed robbery, two counts, 1952. Parole last April. This kid's doing all right. He didn't build that station wagon out of a do-it-yourself kit. I checked with the Bureau of Corrections for his address. It's the same one that the DMV gave us. Barnett checked the place out thoroughly and says that Wells lives with his younger brother, Tony. Well, right, have Barnett stay there. Check the Bureau for his personal habits, his job, his friends, his hangouts. I want to find out if he and his buddy knew which paintings to take and which ones to leave. Well, do you think there's someone else working on the inside? Well, somebody had access to those invoices. They knew when the shipment was going to arrive and the value of the paintings. We've only got two leads to the inside. Edward R. Wells and who else? Carter Giles. You know something? I think I'm going to get interested in art. But eight, gentlemen. You'll be safe here for a while. It's a long way from your home. Now stay in the room until you hear from me and forget all about those paintings. Oh, sure. We can forget. But how do we make the cops forget? You left the paintings in that hay truck, did you not? Yeah, that's right. And the driver? Dead, like you told us. I don't like it. This was supposed to be a straight heist job, and now we're up to our necks in murder. The job you did for me, Eddie, was a masterpiece of unparalleled bungling. The two of you are fortunate to have any necks left at all. Now, if you're wise, you'll do as I tell you. Forget the paintings. Forget Carter Giles. Forget me for a while, too. Forget you, Mr. Mills? Uh-uh. Not until payday. You were to be paid out of the money I got for those paintings. Now you'll have to wait till I get some cash. How long do you expect us to wait? Till you build a nice frame for us and hang us on the wall? We need some traveling money. The way things are at the moment, gentlemen, we have no choice. We have to trust each other, whether we want to or not. Why, you... Hold it, hold it, Eddie. He's right. What can we do? Besides, he said he'd get some dough to us when he gets some. Forget it. We better be hearing from you. And quick. Lock the door. I don't understand. What sort of person would deliberately ruin a work of art and then commit murder? Whoever did it must know you very well. They know how you love paintings, how much you value them. They know you'll pay $500,000 to save your paintings. Yes, I would. I couldn't permit a priceless work of art to be destroyed like... like. Right, tell me something. Would you invest this kind of money to help us find a murderer? I don't understand. I'd like to have you answer the ransom note. $500,000 in cold cash. Pay it, just like the note demands. But you said the paintings are safe. Or right, you know it. I know it. Nobody else does. Suppose you pay the ransom. What do you think would happen then? I imagine the thieves would be as confused as I am right now. I want to be around to see you as the most confused. I want a list of everybody who works for you. Your maid, your butler, your chauffeur, and your business associates like your lawyer, your attorneys, business manager. Really, Mr. Matthews, I can't conceive of anybody going so low as to... What, steal or commit murder? I can't conceive of it. 
Mr. Giles is a mathematical formula. You take what you don't want to believe, add it to what you have to believe. You come up with amazing answers. Yes. Oh, Mr. Giles, nice to hear from you. Yes. Yes, I'm going over some of your ledgers now. Pardon? 500,000, what for, C.G.? But as your business manager, I feel I must know. Oh, stolen? Uh, the paintings will be recovered, I'm sure. What? The, the police have no leads at all? Yes, of course, C.G., I'll be right over. You have no invoices, no records, no reports, nothing, is that right? A paradox of the wealthy, Mr. Matthews. We hire a business manager so that we won't know how wealthy we really are. I see, now. Now, about this Mr. Mills. Do you trust him? I have for over 20 years. Come in. Ah, George. Now, what's all of this about stolen painting, C.G.? Mr. Mills, I want you to meet Mr. Matthews of the Highway Patrol. Having no use, sir. Mr. Matthews. He's here to investigate the robbery. I was afraid of something like this. Anything that expensive is bound to cause trouble. You spent too much for those paintings. My financial watchdog. Tell me, when were the paintings due to arrive here? As I, as I recall, the plane was to land two days ago. Plane? Air freight. Oh, where are they located? Upstate. About 62 miles in Gilroy. We had to pay extra for very secret trucking in an unmarked truck. Now tell me, the trucking company, when did they say they would get the paintings down here? I didn't know that we had done any business with a trucking company. Well, the air freight company was to handle all trucking arrangements. If you wish, Mr. Matthews, I could arrange to find my copies of receipts and correspondence. It's all right, I'll check with the company directly. Now, Mr. Giles, what about the ransom? I have to pay it. You plan to pay ransom after what these canvases have already cost you? My paintings have been stolen and I want them back. But you... you have no guarantee you'll even get the paintings once the ransom has been paid. Are you going to permit this, Mr. Matthews? Well, I'm very sorry. I think he has more confidence in the power of money than he has in the power of the law. There's nothing I can do to stop him. Sorry, Mr. Mills. I want you to get that ransom money in cash as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'll talk to you. Goodbye, Mr. Matthews, and thank you. C.G., you're an idiot, paying out money for paintings that, that may never be returned to you. How can you tell, George? Sometimes even thieves are honest with a large amount of money. Have that ransom money here in the morning. We will follow the instructions to the letter. At Highway Patrol Headquarters, work was started to turn theories into facts. A long-distance call was placed to the air freight company in Gilroy. It was learned that three copies of the invoice on the art shipment had been sent out. One to Carter Giles, one to the U.S. Customs Department, and one to the trucking company. A long-distance call to the trucking company in Gilroy revealed that only the most trustworthy personnel handle invoices on valuable cargo, and apparently the only outsider who had information on the delivery was Carter Giles himself. You say Giles called about the shipment? When? Well, thanks very much. Did you learn anything? Well, the trucking company says that Giles called, wanted to know when his shipment would arrive. Well, that seems natural enough. It does, huh? Giles didn't even know that the trucking company was involved in the shipment. Have the phone company run a check on any calls to Gilroy from Giles' home and the home of his employees. We'll need a court order for that. That's a cinch. You make it out. I'll sign it. The due process of law frequently must pass a bridge of legal paperwork and detail. But when necessary, that bridge can be crossed with surprising speed. In this case, the court order was prepared, approved, and issued within a few hours. By morning, the highway patrol had received the telephone company's report on the long-distance calls. It was a report on a toll call placed to Gilroy. It was placed two days ago on the 18th to Oregon 80099. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, here it is right here. Oregon 80099. Well, whose phone is it? George Mills. Giles' business manager. Our inside man. Let's bring him in. Hey, 
Hello. Hello, is this Eddie? Yeah, this is Eddie. George Mills. Mills. Something important has come up. I think I'll be able to pay you gentlemen for your work after all. What do you mean you think you'll be able to pay us? You'll pay us all right, and we'll pay you a visit. No need for belligerence, Eddie. Everything will be all right when I see you. You will be there for a while, I trust. We'll be here all right. Our social life has been pretty slow. And just for the book mills, we're clicking away like a couple of taxi meters. The longer we wait, the more you pay. I'm aware of that, Eddie. But I respect my obligations. You'll be paid in full. I'll see you shortly. Well, he's coming. With the dough? He's bringing it. That's where he lives. Yeah, and there he is. Let's pick him up. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see where he takes us. Get in the car. What's a five-letter word meaning legal tender? Wait till Mills gets here, he'll tell you. Oh, then I wish he'd hurry up. Payday is the longest day of the year for me. If doesn't get here soon, I'll go stir crazy. Oh, I have it money. M-O-N-E-Y. for this particular payment, gentlemen. I'll mark it in the books as charity. What does this mean, Mills? I told you, I'm recognizing an obligation. What for? You were ordered to separate yourselves from those paintings. Oh, well, we did. Sure. Then why is Carter Giles offering $500,000 for the return of those paintings? He's doing what? Giles has instructed me to pay the ransom for them. Evidently, you gentlemen have decided to put my plan into effect without the benefit of my guidance. Simple arithmetic, gentlemen. Look, Mills, we don't get the same answers as you do. Either you gentlemen tell me where you've hidden those paintings or accept my payment. Look, Mills, you wouldn't shoot us. You'd have the whole apartment house down on your head. I don't intend to shoot. I intend to turn you over to the police for the murder of the driver of that hay truck. You can't deny that you... All right, hold it! Don't get against the wall. Hey, look, this guy's trying to pin a murder rap on us, and he's as deep as we are. Shut up, Tony. Well, he is, isn't he? Shut up! Mr. Matthews, you certainly don't intend to link a man in my position with this common gunman. Mr. Mills. Judging from your position right now, it's going to be easy. Real easy. All right, move. I hope you'll be with us again next week. In the meantime, try to be as good a driver as you think you are. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs> 